Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and Free For All Friday. Today we're going to do tips and tricks for a yard sale. Yard sales. It's yard sale season. So what better time to declutter get rid of, replace, and make some money than to have a yard sale. It's yard sale season, so I'm going to tell you 22 tips and tricks on the things that I have learned over the past 20 plus years of having yard sales. I made myself a list, and I'll be referring to this so I won't forget anything because I wanted to give you my best tips. Uh, these are the, um, I've had 20, like I said, over 20 years experience in doing this. I don't claim to be an expert by any means, but these things have worked for me. I went, I have gone from making, um, maybe $40 when I started having them to making upwards of $800 for a yard sale. And, uh, it's, you know, it all had to do with kid stuff. People love kid stuff. It's hard to find good quality kid stuff. And I tried to take care of my kids' clothes and their toys. I, you know, made sure they weren't stained. I took care of them. So, you know, that is uh, what helped me. And when I would make the money, I would give my kids some money or I would go buy them something. And as they got older, into their teenage years, what they had in the yard sale, and if they sold, they got that money. Because it was their stuff. Even though we bought it or someone else bought it for them, it was theirs. It would be like the same to, in my eyes. This is just the way I look at it. That if someone bought me something and I put it in the yard sale, well, should I have to give them that money back? So that's just, that's just what I did. So I would give them their own money. So I'm going to give you tips and tricks that I have learned over the past uh, 20 plus years. And hopefully these will help you to make some money if you have a yard sale. So let's get into this. Let's start by number one. And this is the absolute most important one. You need to check to see if your city, county, town, whatever it may be, requires a permit and you need to check with code enforcements. Um, I live in the county. I don't live in the city. I live like a half a mile from the city. I don't think, uh, I don't know if the city requires permits or not, but I know the county do does it, so we don't have to have permits, so that's not an issue here. So, But you need to check and make sure because you don't want to get it shut down. You need to check with code enforcements. Um, you don't, like when you put up your signs, you don't want to impede the view of traffic. You don't want to put them too close to the road. You don't want them to be um, a distraction. You, I mean, you want people to see them and come in, but you also don't want them to be a hazard. So uh, around here, if you put them too close to the road, if they're too large, they will take them down and they will toss them. So check with your code enforcement to make sure you comply on that level as well because you don't want to get your yard sale shut down or maybe even get it where you can no longer have a yard sale. So make sure you check that. <clears throat> Number two, you need to pick a location. Pick a good location with lots of traffic uh, that is um, well not, you know, if, if possible. Sometimes this, these things are not possible because you may be having it on your own and you may be having it at your location and there's no other options. But if you have options, pick a good, the best location, well-traveled, uh, well-known, uh, easily accessible, plenty of parking. Uh, we've had, we have ours at Brooks uh, because where I live, I live on a very, very busy road, which would be a plus for a yard sale, but traffic tends to speed through here. And by speed, I mean speed. I also live on a slope that goes down a hill and my driveway is right at the top of that hill. But on the other side is a, the hill goes like this and my driveway is here. So you can't see coming this way and you can't see coming this way. 
So people pulling in and out of my driveway is a hazard, so we don't have them here. But where Brooke lives, there is a road that comes in, goes in front of her house, and comes back around the other side of her house and comes back out to the, to the road that I live on. That's how close we live together. The road that comes into her subdivision and out is the road that I actually live on. And it is easily accessible. It is, um, people know it, and there's parking, and um, so that's that's a pretty good thing there. It's not as hazardous as it is here. So uh, pick a good location. Number three, have a practical date and time. Uh, by date, I'm talking about weather. Make sure the weather is um, cooperating. You don't want storms. You don't want bad weather. You don't want anything infringing on your yard sale. Uh, weekends are better here. Um, holidays are great. So, uh, you know, like say Memorial Day or Labor Day when people are off, they sometimes look for things to do. So pick a practical date. Uh, and here, uh, the first of the month is generally a pretty good time to have one because uh, people get their um, their checks and, uh, you know, they don't have a whole lot of money. So they're looking for ways to, to uh, get what they need and not have to spend a lot of money. So the first of the month is generally a good time here. Uh, the time between we do between seven and eight a.m. to about three to four p.m. These are this is generally during school time, but it's usually when people are dropping their kids off or picking their kids up from school, uh, you know, or uh, they're on their way to work. Um, it generally show, slows down right after lunch, but you know we have a pretty steady flow of of um, customers till then. So pick a good time and a good day. Number four, get your word out. You need to advertise. Advertise, you've heard location, location, location. Well, in yard sale, it's location, but it's also advertise, advertise, advertise. Utilize uh, social media. Utilize um, Facebook. There's Facebook Marketplace. There is Facebook yard sale sites. So uh, use those. Put your uh, yard sale heading or garage sale uh, multi-family or single, whatever it may be, put your, um, your dates, your times, your location, um, as much information as possible. If possible, put a list of uh, items you may have, such as toys, uh, adult clothing, children's clothing, decor, furniture, whatever it may be. Make sure that you can list those things if possible, because people may message you and ask you, well, what do you have? And if you already have it listed, and if you already have it listed, it helps that way. Uh, post pictures if you can. Um, you know, uh, that sometimes helps. Put people or a video that people can see the things that you have so that, ooh, that's worth going to. Let's go to this. Make signs. Put signs at the roads that will uh, lead people into your yard sale. You know, date, time, location, all this stuff. Make them colorful. Word of mouth. Tell people, I'm having a yard sale. Stop by my yard sale. It's a word of mouth. Number five, we have a multi-family yard sale, and that's really beneficial to all of us. Not everyone can do that, but if you can, it really helps. Maybe not a multi-family, uh, maybe multi-neighbor, maybe um, friends, whatever it may be, but have multi-people uh, there. This brings in more stuff, therefore more people will stop by. The bigger the yard sale, the more customers that you will have. You have a, a wide variety of things. You'll have more people there to help you. Uh, say people have questions and you're um, helping someone buy their stuff. So you're with a, that customer and letting them pay so they can answer questions. They can keep an eye on your uh, items to make sure they're not carried off. They can allow you to have a uh, bathroom and food breaks and, you know, it gives you one, someone to socialize with. Plus, they can also um, take money while you are. So, therefore, your line may not back up. Because so, sometimes there may be a line of, you know, 10 people. And if you have multiple people helping you. And we just divide it out. If we take up for each one, we just divide it out at the end of the sale. So, have a multifamily one if you can. Number six. Save your grocery bags and your boxes and your newspaper. 
uh, when we go to the grocery store a couple of weeks before I know we're having yard sale, I will save the plastic grocery bags and I, I will take those and um, the other families will as well. And that way people have things to carry their stuff off it with or and boxes to put stuff in and newspapers to wrap up fragiles. So make sure you keep all those things. Number seven, declutter. Go through your items. If you've not used them in a year or so, ask yourself, do I need this? Can I get rid of this? You know, I can make some money off this. I can replace this. I can uh, buy something new. Ask yourself, do I need this? Do I use this? And if not, get rid of it. Number eight, have a well laid out yard sale. Make it appealing. Uh, organize, have it organized. Have your larger, more eye-catching um, items at the front of the yard sale. That way it will draw people in, but also have a few at the back where you may be that will draw people through. You know, uh, people will have to go from one set of larger, more eye-catching things to another set, and they will have to go through your other stuff, so that may encourage more sales that way. So, lay them out accordingly. Um, I said, I'm going through my notes here. Number nine, tables and clothing racks. Those are very beneficial. Um, by tables, I mean tables, you know, outdoor tables, uh, homemade tables, sawhorses, boards, whatever, but make sure they're safe. They need to be safe. You don't want any accidents. Uh, sometimes the elderly and the um, medically fragile uh, can't bend over, and if you have them up arm's level, if they're more out to sell. Uh, hang your clothing on at eye level on racks. If you don't have racks, uh, you know, string up a, a, um, a rope. Hang them up. People are more apt to look at things that are eye level and laid out that they can just look through them. And um, that helps as well. So make sure you have those things if possible. Display them in groups. Uh, by groups, I mean have your toys together, have your kids stuff together, your adult stuff together, your decor together, your furniture together. Have them in groups. That way people don't have to scatter all over the place. I mean, they may be looking for one thing, so just have them in groups. Um, number 10, pre-price your items. I know I've been to uh, yard sales before that there's no prices on things, and I will just walk away because I, if I have multiple items in my hands, I don't want to just say, well, how much for this? How much for this? How much for this? How much for this? Uh, that can be distracting to you and to the buyer as well, and sometimes people will just walk away. So if you have a price on it, people will know pretty much what you want, and then they, you can go from there. You can negotiate, but uh, always make sure uh, you pre-price your items. And price number 11, price them to sell, but know their value. Um, you don't want to bring your stuff back in at the end of the yard sale if you don't have to. The purpose is to sell this stuff to get rid of it. So price it accordingly. If it's, you know, price it according to value. Don't lowball yourself. You know the value of your stuff and what you want. But you also don't want to bring it in at the end of the day either. So, you know, you want to get rid of it. Number 12, be willing to negotiate. People will always ask you, well, will you take this? Will you take that? And that's sometimes the thrill of the of the hunt is to get to ne negotiate the price. Well, how cheap can I get this? Or you, how much can I get out of this? So be willing to negotiate, but know the value. Don't go for pennies on things that's worth dollars unless you just want to get rid of it. So be willing to negotiate. Number 13, keep your items clean. Wipe them down. If you have items out there that are, say, home decor or furniture, and if I'm at your yard sale and they're dirty, they're grimy, they're dusty, uh, nasty, I'll pass them by. So just take a cloth, wipe them down, clean them up, and put them out there priced accordingly, and people are more apt to look at them. So don't put your grimy stuff out there. People tend to just pass over that because they just don't want to fool it because they don't know where it's been. They don't. They may not know you. You could be the cleanest person in the world, but they don't know that, so they may pass over it. So make sure you keep them clean. Uh, you know, try to avoid stained stuff unless you post it as they're stained or free or whatever. 
people tend to pass over those things. So make sure they're clean, well kept, and appealing. Number 14, make it fun. By this, I mean, have, be creative. Make creative signs. You know, uh, put sayings on them. Uh, best yard sale, best little yard sale in, in town. Or, you know, pictures. Uh, make them colorful. Give plenty of information. Um, have balloons, colorful balloons leading people in. People tend to notice your yard sales quicker than they do just the ones out if they are more appealing and more creative and more fun. So have fun with it. Uh, you know, have balloons at your yard sales, at your signs, whatever. Just make it fun. Number 15. Know your goal. Why are you having a yard sale? Are you trying to get rid of stuff? Are you trying to declutter? Are you trying to make more room in your home? Uh, are you wanting to replace stuff? Um, ask yourself, do I need this? Do I need to get rid of it? Do I want to get rid of it? Do I have to get, what, whatever. Ask yourself, am I doing it to make money? And you, you need to pay a bill. Do you want to go on vacation? Do you want to buy new stuff? Do you want to put it away for a rainy day? Um, ask yourself these things. What is your goal? Maybe it's both. Maybe you want to just make money and you want to get rid of stuff. So you need to have that in your mind while pricing and as your goal as a yard sale and selling to see, you know, how much are you willing to go down or whatever you're willing to price it for to get rid of it. So ask yourself, what is your goal? You may have a goal to go on vacation and you may say, well, I need to sell this much stuff to go on vacation. So, you know, dollars build up, dollars build up, dollars build up. Maybe you need to pay a bill and you have something there that you think may be worth a little bit more, but you need to get that bill paid. And you say, well, that's that much I can put towards my bill. It's better to sell it and get that much money than not sell it and not get any money. So ask yourself, you know, what is your goal? Number 16, everything must go. Your goal is to get rid of this stuff. It's not to bring it back into your home after your sale. You know, the less, the less you have to deal with, the better. So, have a box of free stuff. If it's stuff you were thinking about donating anyway, you know, just have a, free, a box of free items that people can take out of. That way you don't have to take them and they get stuff for free. So, have a box for free. Um, have a super sale. This is kind of hard to do if you're having a multifamily yard sale because, you know, people's stuff are together and you it's kind of hard to divvy this up. But because um, you may have 10 items and the other person may have one. So, you know, it's kind of hard to determine how to divide that up. But if you can have a super sale, what I mean by that is have a bag sale. Fill a bag for $5. Whatever you can fit in this bag, you can have for $5. If we do this, we generally do that the last three, four hours of the yard sale of the last day. And that way it it also keeps uh, you from having to take stuff back in. Um, have a percentage off. Say have at the last day, have so many, 25% off, 50% off. Offer uh, just different discounts that way. Uh, sometimes you may can give things away for free. Just anything to keep from having to bring it back into your home. So, you know, everything, your goal is to get rid of your stuff. So, make sure that you can do these things. Allow yourself time to set up for your yard sale. Every time we have a yard sale, we say we're going to be open at 8 o'clock. So, I tend to head to Brooks about 7 to set up for the yard sale. And we have customers by 7, 15, 7, 30, people wanting to look through our stuff, but we're still setting stuff out. And that's a hindrance sometimes to you putting stuff out and to them wanting to look. So if possible, have it set up at a, you know, an early time so people can look through it. 
and that way you don't have to stress or trying to get things put out so allow yourself plenty of time like i said we've had them there by 7 30 at times 18 be friendly and greet your customers you don't have to carry on a conversation get their life story but good morning how are you today uh when they leave thank you for stopping by uh, be greet them be nice be willing to help be uh willing to negotiate don't i mean don't get don't be insulted don't be disrespected don't allow that but be friendly and greet your guests customers 19 keep it as neat as possible this is almost impossible to do because as everyone knows it has a yard sale things get carried from place to place uh you have things folded up it looks like a hurricane came through and blew stuff everywhere and stuff end up everywhere and sometimes you have a lot of customers there and it's kind of hard to keep things neat and orderly but if you can Keep your stuff folded, your stuff hung up, your stuff organized. Keep traf uh, keep uh, pathways clear. Uh, you don't want people tripping. Uh, you don't want kids dragging toys all over the place. But so keep it as neat as possible. Keep a trash can there to keep uh, stuff in. Uh, just try to keep it as neat as possible. Twenty. Have change. You need to have change. A lot of people will come to a yard sale with 20s, sometimes hundreds. FYI, I don't accept hundreds at a yard sale because I don't, sometimes I don't trust them. I'm not accusing anybody of things. I just don't trust them because, and sometimes it wipes you out of your change. But keep change. I usually tend to keep about $40 in change. Uh, a 10, some fives, some ones. And some quarters to make sure it's because sometimes some of them might come by with a dollar and it's 50 cents and the items 50 cents or this you know it's different things so keep change make sure you have change because it may um, interfere with the sale if you don't have change 21 after your sale if you have stuff left over make three piles make a keep pile of stuff that you can take back into your home and that you can use or you know put it into a future sale whatever it may be have a keep pile have a donate pile things that you can donate uh to um the needy to non-for-profit charities for the home whatever the situation may be uh, the elderly nursing homes and such uh have a donate pile that, uh, you know, it may be some craft stuff that you can donate to a club for elderly. Just just different things. So, make a donate pile. And you can also make a sales pile. You can always advertise on Facebook, uh, Marketplace, different places of stuff to sell. I know there's been times in the past that I, at the yard, after the yard sale, I will group all of my stuff together and I will place on a yard sale site all of this. First come, first serve, 50 bucks. That's just a number, whatever. They'll come and pick it up sometimes. They'll pay you, and it's price. They can take it, and they can have a yard sale with it. So, make three piles, and in the donate pile, you all can put in the donate pile. We usually have one person. Sometimes it's usually me, and I will take them to the charity and donate them. Um, 22. Have fun. Like I said, don't sit out there and be miserable. Have fun. Play some music in the background. Um, have family over that you can talk to. Be friendly. Uh, just there's any number of things that you can do. Uh, we have, we have as a group, people will probably think we're weird, but we will sing songs. We will talk. We will reminisce. We will watch video. I mean, you know, there's we'll show each other videos. Um, talk to people, get to know um, people that you know will sometimes come back and you can catch up. Just have fun. Um, 
you don't have to be miserable. So, I hope these tips and tricks have helped you. I hope, uh, like I said, these are just things that I have utilized in the past, and, and they have been successful for me. Uh, a yard sale is a big job. It's stressful. It's time-consuming. It's hot. It can be boring. But these are just some things that I have done in the past uh, that, that have helped me out. Um, and I hope they will help you out as well. I love yard sales. I've not been to a yard sale in a long, long time. And I'm hoping to hit up a lot this year because, you know, now by this channel, I, there's things that I can uh, repurpose and make over and craft with. And I'm hoping to find them at a yard sale because they tend to be cheaper at a yard sale than they do at a thrift store. So I'm hoping to hit up some as well. I'm hope we're supposed to have this yard sale um, this Friday and Saturday uh, if the weather permits. And I will make a video about that as well and put it out next week. This one is going to probably be out in the next day or so. Um, but I'll try my best to get the some video from our yard sale and show you how it went. So, I'm going to end this here. I hope these have helped you. Let me know in the comments below. Comment and tell me th your ideas, your suggestions, your tips, your tricks. You know, uh, they could help other people. There may be plenty of things that I have missed. Some people sell refreshments, make money that way. So, just let me know. Comment down below and tell me some things. So until next time, don't forget to like, to subscribe, to hit that notification bell that will notify you every time I upload a video, and share this video. It helps me reach more people, and I love reaching more people. It helps me build my channel, and, it, and people give me ideas of what to do. So share this video. So until next time, my crafty crew. Come back and see me again. I love you guys. Happy yard selling. Bye.